The mission we have here called Solosi Mission is a testimony, it is an epitome of God's power. Uh, this place where we are is a testimony of divine leadership. When the missionaries came here, the Lord led them to this place. And uh, it was in 1894 when the farmer, Peter Vessels, he was uh, a friend of uh, Landy Star Jameson. Landy Star Jameson was a medical doctor and uh, he was a doctor to the Vessels family. And Peter Vessels at their farm in South Africa, the De Beers Company had found gold. And because they had found gold, the value of their farm uh, went up because of the gold, uh, because of the, actually not gold, diamond, because of the diamond deposits that were in their farm. And uh, because of this, they sold their farm and became a very wealthy family. And this family had become Adventist. We don't have time to talk about how they became Adventist. And when they had become Adventist, they sponsored missionaries to come from America to South Africa. Later on, they said we must build an Adventist mission among the Africans. And the vessels went to meet Cecil John Rhodes. Cecil John Rhodes was the Prime Minister of the Cape. The Cape was under the British and uh, the Transvaal was under the Dutch or the Afrikaners. And uh, they went there, met Cecil John Rhodes, it was Vessels and uh, Robinson. When they got to him, uh, he wrote a letter they never knew the contents. He was just silent as they were explaining the, their desire. They said, we want to build an industrial machine among the natives uh, on the other side where the British South Africa company, which was owned by Sir John Rhodes, had found claims and uh, they owned this uh, as their farm, the entire Zimbabwe was their farm. And uh, they got a letter and they came here to Bulawayo. Uh, it was a trip where there was uh, Peter Vessels uh, and uh, there was also Sparrow. Sparrow could speak Zulu, which was close to Ndebele, similar language to Ndebele. So that's why they brought him he was also Adventist, and there was also I.P. Beton. They came via Botswana and uh, went via fig tree on a, on a, on a cart. And uh, they got to Bulawayo, got to Star Jameson. He said, look for land, whatever land is unoccupied, go to that land. And they came here to Solus. When they came here, they gathered by the trees there, there are those trees close to Dr. Damini's home, just close to the main gate. That's where they gathered with the villagers. The name of uh, this place was Ngombe Lupenu in Kalanga because it was Kalanga territory. It was a cattle pasture where people were having very, uh, uh, a lot of cattle. And uh, the cattle, Mombel Pen, I think Mrs. Simkanda would uh, explain it much better. But uh, it meant that the cattle were shining because they were well fed. So they came, then they met the emissary of the chief. The emissary was Soluswe. Actually, he was 
salawukwe in Kalanga, which means remain, uh, uh, remain well, but it was corrupted to Saluhwe and ultimately corrupted to Soluswe and later corrupted to Solusi. So it was a chain of uh, corruptions. And uh, they met, all of them were putting on, uh, on skins and uh, vessels took his jacket, gave it to the chief, uh, the emissary of the chief who was Soluswe and uh, he put on the jacket, it had no, no trouser, no shirt, no tie, just the, the jacket. And uh, the party went, they got the land, uh, 5,000 hectares of land, and uh, after they had received that land, they went back. 1895, the team now came from America, led by George, Byron Tripp and uh, his wife. Also in that trip, there was George Carmichael. Also in that trip, uh, there was, uh, uh, he came a few weeks later, uh, William Harry Anderson, but he was also part of uh, that trip in a way. They got here and the wheels of the cart are by the maintenance day, those wheels are at the gate of the maintenance, those are the wheels of uh, the wagons that brought the missionaries here to Solusi, all the way from Kimbali up to Solusi in 1895. And they found Chief Solusi putting on the same jacket that he was given by vessels in 1894. Uh, don't worry about dry clean and uh, all the other activities the jacket was still there, he was still putting it on, and uh, proud to put it on. And uh, this was the environment when the missionaries came here. This was not very good land for several reasons. Actually, why they chose this place remains a mystery. The soils not so fertile and prone to malaria. And the tribes that were environing this place quite hostile. Uh, and many other factors made this place quite inclement. Why they chose it, it still defies logic. But we say to ourselves, this is the wilderness where the prophets were trained, which was travested by the prophets, like John the Baptist would be in the wilderness, the Essenes were in the wilderness, Israel was in the wilderness. Here we believe they chose the wilderness of Solusi for a very good reason, for the training of the prophets, for the voice in the wilderness. This is the place. And uh, they came here, 1895, uh, they were here. And uh, soon, 1896, there was the rebellion. Uh, they ran to Bulawayo to hide in Bulawayo because of the rebellion. And the items of the missionaries were taken to level caves. Some of you have gone there. Those who have not gone there, before you leave Solusi or before you die, uh, visit level caves, whichever will come first, uh, make sure you make a trip to level caves. Uh, this is where these people, the Bakalanga people, used to hide their grain, especially when they were raised, they would hide their grain by those caves. So they took the items of missionaries, hid it by the level caves. And then later on, 1898, there was malaria. And uh, the first to die from, the, from malaria was John Ntaba Lutuli, the father to uh, uh, 
what's his name in South Africa? The more famous Lutuli. Alpet Lutuli. Uh, thank you. And uh, Alpet was born here, right inside this campus. At times, as Solusi, we have the latitude for arrogance uh, to say Lutuli House actually must be here at Solusi because this is where he was born. But that's not part of our script today. What's important is John Tabalutuli was the first to succumb to malaria. Then after him followed uh, George Carmichael and uh, then the other missionaries, George Byron Tripp, uh, his son, George Byron Tripp Jr. And also Mrs. Amitage. Mrs. Amitage didn't die here, she died. Uh, in South Africa, uh, as she was seeking medication in South Africa, she died there. And the uh, General Conference met 1900. Uh, after trip, they sent another missionary. They sent F. L. Mead. 1900, General Conference met. They said Solusi must relocate. They voted a budget for Mead, and they said. If uh, you could find a place, whether in South Africa or other parts of Zimbabwe, which were much more friendly, they would uh, allow him to set up a mission station there. Mead said, no, we are put at Solusi. We remain at Solusi. If it means dying, we will die saving Solusi. And one of the reasons that made the missionaries to die is because they were starving here at Solusi. When we talk of starvation, starvation is not a, a new karma at Solusi. It has been here since the inception of Solusi. What made the missionaries to die, what made them to succumb to malaria, is because they were starving. Malaria was an opportunistic infection. And uh, they succumbed uh, because of their frail bodies. Actually, in 1896, they say as they were trying to eat, they would see people peeping through their windows, saying, please give me something to eat also. Give me something to eat. And there were many orphans who were here. We include Isaac Kribankomo, who became a pastor the first three pastors to be ordained in the SDA church, uh, he had been picked up as an orphan. Many of these people were been picked up as orphans. They stayed here with missionaries with very lean budgets. And uh, so Lucy went through very difficult uh, experiences right from inception. And uh, these experiences have gone on again and again in the entire story of Solusi. We would have taken the story until today. When Virgil Robinson wrote the book, it's there in the library. If you can't find it in the library, it's there in, on the internet. It's a PDF. You don't buy it. You just Google it. It's there for free. Uh, he wrote it after 1978, when Solusi was closed. And uh, he writes about the experience of Solusi, the Solusi story, the struggles. Uh, the times of peril uh, that have uh, visited Solusi. And as Solusi, if uh, he had lived long enough, he would have been uh, here in uh, 2008. I was here in 2008. We used to go and look for grain right at the, by the three kilometer peg there and uh, wait for a, uh, a lorry from the grain marketing board to bring grain to Solusi. Uh, every, the ground was level. The ground was level. Lecturer, uh, students from MSQ, everybody was just going there to get a packet of grain to go and eat at home. And at times it would delay come here as late as 10 at night, but we're there meekly waiting and remembering not 
uh, because there was no way you could get. These are the experiences of Solusi. But uh, I want to tell you, this far the Lord has led us. The Lord loves this place. I believe in this place. These difficult experiences, to me, I say, this is, this is the best training ground for ministers. Uh, Americans, where they train their elite forces, they train them in very difficult circumstances. They take them to deserts in Libya or some of these deserts. This is where the elite units are trained. And uh, the elite units of the Adventist church, they are trained here at Solusi. That's why our students also sell like hot cakes because after enduring Solusi, wherever you are sent is heaven. Uh, you say, Lord, I can fight. And we are proud, not because we torture people here, no. We are proud because we prepare people to serve in this world. Uh, but we are also happy. There are some who wish or who prophesy our doom that will close down. Let me say it. If God, if God does not say we close down, we will not close down. We came here to serve at Solusi and we are here. There are at times workers who are unhappy, who complain that Solusi is the worst place on earth. Uh, there is uh, the, a place which is worse than Solusi is hell. No other place is as bad as Solusi on earth. But I want to tell you, us as workers, faculty and staff, we are here. If it will close, it will be us who will close the door after everyone has left. We are here. Not because there is money. No. We are here because there is mission here. We are here. And students, I want to assure you, we, this is Solusi. We went through this place. It has its challenges. But the Lord has sent you here. For now, you might be angry, you might be frustrated, and you might be asking yourself why you came here. But I want to assure you, you came to the right place. And I want to celebrate what the Lord has done to us over this weekend. The gift that we have received as Solusi to uh, revamp Solusi. I want to tell you and uh, say, uh, I am not a prophet, but I want to tell you the great days of Solusi are yet to come. They are in the future. Those who are alive, please, I encourage you, don't commit suicide because some great things are yet to happen at this place. And we have started actually in 2012, we started updating Solusi story. We wrote additional chapters to edit Solusi story. And we had agreed with Robinson's family to add pages to Solusi story. But uh, I am by myself uh, calling a committee by myself here, saying, no, that project, we are throwing it away. We are not adding chapters to that book. We are writing a new story story. We want to write a new book about Solusi, which uh, Robinson is 1894 to 1978. And uh, we want to write another book, Solusi, the new Solusi story, or the real Solusi story. Solusi story, the great times of Solusi. And those days are coming. Me, I have no plan to die. If I die, it's not my will, it's his. Uh, and uh, if, uh, because I want to see what the Lord will do for us as Solusi. Those want to stand with me and say, Lord, this far 
you have let Solusi, Ebenezer. Lord, help me in my way to support this mission. Uh, either through my service in the future, through my prayer, through whatever, and pray for those who support Solusi. You can stand up and we'll ask our pastor, Zonda Sara, to come and pray for us and say, Ebenezer, we praise you, Lord, for Solusi. Let's bow our hands as you pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for Solusi University. This place, this place, you chose it yourself for us to be here. We are here, but we are not the first, neither are we the last. There were many forebears who went before us. There are many who are going to pass the, through this cold, this clear drought, so to say, after we are born. But Lord, during our time, we have seen your hand who led us to this place, to this uh, point in time, and so that's why we can say, Ebenezer, this far the Lord has helped us. Lord, we, we thank you because of the new source story uh, which is uh, coming into focus. It is the new source story that is coming into focus. As we transition to this new story from the old source story, help us not to forget history. Help us not to forget how your hand has led us uh, throughout the past. Because uh, there is danger in forgetfulness. We have to remember this story, the whole story of the story, because even in that story, there are many great things that you, uh, you open it for the children to, to pass through. Now, Lord, we, we see ourselves having, having, having crossed the Red Sea. And um, at this moment, to be honest, at this moment, we need uh, counseling because uh, this thing is just too big for us to process with our own minds. We, 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 we are trying to wrap our minds around what we have seen, uh, and the, the, the truth is that uh, words fail us. Uh, sometimes we end up just babbling with uh, nothingness, sometimes we Baffled with joy and gratitude. This is where we are. Please uh, don't leave us. We are here. As this new solution story, Lord, goes and uh, we, we, we move into the future in this solution story, may you bless all of us to trust you more uh, in our own personal lives with battles to fight, with resistance to cross. But after seeing what you have done uh, for this place of yours, we are encouraged. We are encouraged. We are very much encouraged. Lord, we cannot thank you enough. We, we can't. We have a precedent uh, in the book of Revelation where angels say, Holy, 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 day in, day out. They do so and they will do so throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. What an honor for us to be invited. To, to begin to praise you now and then do this seamless praise and endless praise until we see you come in the clouds of heaven. Lord, we are praying for some the students who are the reason why we are here. We thank you for them and, and we know that you are going to bring many more. We thank you for our leaders who have been with us uh, during the uh, turbulent times. Uh, Lord, we thank you for their courage and Lord, as we transition to new souls, we continue to pray that you, you, you broaden uh, their horizon, you increase their territory, you bless them with good health and, and, and bless them with wisdom. We are pray, praying for our members of staff. Uh, Lord, we, we know they have started to have a hard time. As we transition, Lord, give them strength uh, to come along. We are praying for lecturers. 
members of faculty, the community in general, Lord, we are in this thing together. Bless us. Continue to bless us. But at this moment, we don't want to be asking and asking and asking. We just want to say thank you. Period. Thank you. You, you. you just deserve our thanks, our gratitude. We are so thankful. Count us among the 10% who are able to and, 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 and quickly remember to, to come back to you and thank you for what you have done. And please remove us from that uh, 90% who, after they have been healed of leprosy, went their way oblivious to what Jesus had done for them. Lord, we want to be thankful and we will continue to be thankful. And we know that what we see with our eyes. What we see with our eyes, with the size of the God we have in you, with the size of the God we have in you, what we see with our eyes, it's a tip, it's a tip of an iceberg. An avalanche is coming. Position us to process the avalanche when it comes. And give us the faith to begin to, to, to thank you even more right now. Oh Lord, the new source is Lord. And the new source is Lord. It's upon us.